Welcome to a platform where we debate on the top stories of the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, and other leagues with the best in the world of sports. You also get interviews with many athletes and media talents at several basketball events, including the WNBA and college basketball. My name is Rafiq Kulwiz on it. This is nothing but that sports talk. Lively looks good on those two attempts. It's an 11 point lead. Ball movement, Holmgren, block on the outside. Doncic ahead, Jones. Way up high for the jam. Turner missed it. Looking for a foul. DiVincenzo up ahead. Let it ride. And the Knicks off to the races. Up 20 now. Once full court, other guys are going to have to make plays. Knicks ball here. It's going to pop. Brunson missed it. Oh! It's officially popped. DiVincenzo. His job is to just try to force you to take a contested mid-range shot. Tatum finds the laces and he buries it. What the NBA playoffs has been this week as I welcome to this episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk. I'm Rafik Luzong alongside Knox Luzon and Ryan Walker. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, good, good to be here. Yes, indeed. Now what's happening. <clears throat> yeah, yeah right a here. lot going on. Boston's on to the conference finals again. Only this time it'll be against either the Indiana Pacers or the New York Knicks. It's only appropriate that I start off by saying, like, with, with the Boston Celtics finally reaching the conference finals again, like, which which opponent you think will be the better fit and a tougher matchup? Started with you, Knox. A uh, tougher matchup definitely is going to be the Knicks. Um, the one thing that Indiana does well better than most teams in the league is is pace, and they can run with with anyone and and run you out the gym, but. There's a huge talent disparity that I think they've been running into the playoffs right now. The Knicks, they'll definitely run into against um, against the Boston Celtics. So if you're a Celtics fan, you're looking for an easier path to the finals, and I definitely think then that a, a matchup against the Pacers is more beneficial. I would favor the Celtics to kind of be either the Knicks or the Pacers, but the Pacers are probably an easier matchup for them. What do you think, Ryan? I mean, um, of course, it's... Um... You know, definitely the uh, the the Pacers are are the more favorable matchup for um for the for the Boston Celtics. They're definitely the more, and we we do it in sports. So we we always you know match people up and look at things eye test wise and pick it what you think would be the better matchup or so on and so forth. So the better matchup is definitely the Indiana Pacers for um the Celtics. But then again, too, we always know that. When you sometimes when you ask for certain things about better matchups or whatever you think is the better matchup, sometimes it can bite you in the behind when you give guys a, you know bulletin board material and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so yeah, it's supposed to be the Pacers for the Celtics. Um, that would be the better matchup, only because the the uh, Pacers are are not too concerned about the defensive end of the basketball. Like you said, they're 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 offensively gifted. The way they play with their pace. Um, I know traditionally Rick Carlisle is a guy that cares about the defensive end in general with his teams. The Dallas Mavericks championship team not only had very good pieces and cogs, they were very good defensively. That's what eventually catapulted the Dallas Maverick teams over those years that were considered soft or didn't have an identity or couldn't defend or rebound finally to win in 2011. So I know Mm -hmm. Carlisle um, cares about that. However, the new age of basketball and the fact that you just don't have the personnel that can guard, I think has had him put in a different implement of style of what they do. Hence why they got Halliburton last year in order to change the direction of what they're doing with the team. So because they can't guard a lick, they have to play that way offensively yeah. <laughs> in order to, to, to um, th- their offense is their defense. Yeah. That's why they are are more of a tougher opponent in Indiana, Indiana, Indiana in their home than they are at home. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm talking that on the road, excuse me. On the road. So um, Mm -hmm. that's definitely the, the favorable matchup, especially since the Knicks defend, they play hard. It's next man up. It's gritty. The only reason why with both matchups and you're right, Knox, why then why the Celtics are still going to be favored. You're going to have a lot of obnoxious, First of all, the Knicks didn't win anything yet. They have to play game six tomorrow. but So we hope that they clear it out tomorrow. I'm thinking in right. seven, but I hope they do it tomorrow. But if they get past 
to get to the Celtics, the obnoxious people and the pompous people of the Celtics nations are going to think that it's a guaranteed win. And the only reason they're saying that is because the Knicks are not completely healthy. Because if the Knicks are completely healthy, the Celtics have a, a different really story. big problem on their hands. And believe it or not, and I hope everybody doesn't think I'm crazy with this, if the Knicks win tomorrow or Sunday and can get out this series with the Pacers, the Celtics have a problem even with how the roster is because the Knicks believe in the locker room. They defend. They're gritty. They're tough. They have. And you know what's so crazy? Maybe a month and a half ago, you might have asked me who would be the best player in that series, and I probably would have said Tatum or Brown. But in the next round, if the Knicks get there, the best player in the series is Jalen Brunson. And it – we're going to really see how mighty he is with those core guys. If he can get four victories against this Boston Celtic, first of all, the Knicks going to the Eastern Conference Finals is already an NBA Finals approach to me because <laughs> they're, 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 they're unhealthy. They, 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 no Julius Randle, no Bogdan Bogdanovich, yeah, yeah. no OG in no this No Mitchell round, Robinson. No Mitchell Robinson. And, yeah. and it, I mean, just look what's occurring. So – if they get to the next round and win two games, that's an accomplishment for what they have. If they beat the Celtics, now that's going to add to their narrative on how this team and organization keeps finding ways to lose in the big games and situations when it counts. If you lose to this undermanned Knicks team, and let me tell you something, and you all know what I'm talking about. In that locker room, they believe. I'm telling yeah. you this, yeah. and if they give that, it's it's not it, it's not crazy for me to think the Knicks can't win a road game undermanned in Boston. Why not? Miami did, or or a home game, right? I mean, in Boston, you're right, because Boston also has right. re- been really bad at home the last four play, uh, playoff series. Right. And, and you know what? They do they not win at home. They, they have not been tested. It's not their fault. They don't make the schedule. They just play the games. They have not been tested in this playoffs. They will be tested if they play the New York Knicks, just from a coaching standpoint, psychological standpoint, and everything. They'll be tested with the Pacers too, but that's only because offensively the Pacers are so gifted. The Pacers don't have what it takes right now probably to beat them in a seven-game series. If the Pacers did that, then that would say a lot about the Boston Celtics, which would be yeah. worse to the narrative on how they cannot get out of big-game situations. And trust me, I got a good friend, Patrick, that I don't know how he's going to go next round because um, if the Knicks get out of this round, that would definitely validate my point to him, which I already told my point to him, that the Knicks are better this year than what they did last year. I don't care how they far they go in the second, third, or whatever round. Much better. But – but he, um, I've given more credit to the Celtics over the years than he has. I've, I mean, I've talked about their disappointments as well, too. But he thinks the Celtics are a complete fluke, mirage, everything. So if I know the undermine, uh, he's a Knicks fan, too. But if undermanned Knicks beat them, he's, it's going to add to his story and say, I told you they're not that good and this, this, <laughs> and that, and blah, blah, blah. The, the, the Celtics are normal when they're not making threes. And like I said, we're a good defensive team. We're going to make it interesting for them. The, the, if if the Cavaliers, by golly, did the Cavaliers get a road game? Yes, they did. They, they won did. game they two won, in Boston. They won game two, they won yeah. game two but in they Boston. Did play the Cav- but they did play the Boston Celtics tough in game four. Without That's Donovan what I'm Mitchell. saying. We're, they played tough the last two games. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're not none of those other teams they played. So, listen, if, this is all I got to say about that metaphor. If they want to sleep with this girl, they're going to have to make sure they take them on every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will say the, the one thing about the, the Celtics-Knicks matchup, I'm, I, obviously it's hypothetical because, like you said, the Knicks still haven't um, closed the deal. Um, traditionally, if, if a smaller guard is going against uh, Drew Holiday, they're in for a tough night because he's just arguably one of the best perimeter defenders we've ever seen. And I do anticipate him and Derek White making Jalen Brunson's life difficult. But what I do like with the Knicks and what they have going right now is the ball does not stick. The moment that double team comes to Jalen Brunson, he has options of swinging it. So as long as, um, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Um, DiVincenzo, sorry about that. As long as DiVincenzo is taking shots and making shots, he's going to miss some here and there. But as long, as long as that confidence remains, 
that's going to be a real problem for the Celtics because they're probably anticipating loading up the paint and then having a uh, three man with if Porzingis comes back, which Porzingis is a real swing for the series because we're not sure his, his, his injury status. Um, if he's out, then I think the Knicks have a legitimate chance. And like we had said before, the Celtics have a history of blanking the bed, uh, so to speak. Uh, in series, they're favored. In series, they're they're they're, they're up. They're they're better than the other team. And Jason Tatum just hasn't been able to carry his team over that hump so far. Um, this season and this series potentially could be the last for the Celtics if, if they're not able to get past the Knicks. Or even if they go to the finals and they're not able to put up a good showing. So we might be seeing the last version of this Celtics team with Tatum and, and uh, Brown. That's a very interesting point. And, and, let's, and as, as a matter of fact, Knox, I mean, the Miami Heat played a major role in the Boston Celtics his playoff failures, I mean, with the exception of the wins, I mean, with the exception of when Boston defeated Miami this year and two years ago in the conference finals, well, because Gene Butler could hit that three. But outside of that, but, but outside of that, Miami, Miami may, played a major role in the Boston Celtics failure playoff failures. Sometimes Jimmy Butler just happened to see role the Boston Celtics when they when he had you figured out. Now we get to yeah. we get to losses against the against the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round, and then and then obviously the loss of loss of Brooklyn in the, in the first round of 2021. But other than that, they can't, they just can't, they, they're like the Detroit Pistons have to win the, win the NBA championship in 2004. They just can't and make it to the finals in 05. They just can't get over the hump. And when it all fails, we're going to see a totally different Boston Celtics team in less than two years. I promise you that. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're seeing the last version of, well, again, if they lose, um, we'll be seeing the last version of the Celtics uh, tandem of Tatum and Brown. Yeah, and I've been t- and I've said this before in the past in the past year well, over a year now. And Ryan Walker, you've been on the show when I said this. When it comes to the New York Knicks, the ball movement moves a lot better with Julius Randle's now on the court. I mean, a year later, we a year later, Julius Randle won at, at like nearly a poor performance in Game Six against the Miami Heat last year in the second yeah. round, the one that got him eliminated. This year, Julius Randle's not even playing this year's playoffs. So look at how deep the, the Knicks have gone. Well, well that's, that's the that's the, mm-hmm. that, that's the biggest thing in in certain situations, especially when when you need offense, you'll look and you'll see like that. And these are the times we need Julius Randle. You know I'm saying that'd be the other guy to give you know Brunson some break to get a guaranteed bucket, yeah. a guaranteed twenty yep. point guy score. But here yep. goes the thing: w- with the whole entire roster, they are the Knicks are a different team. But of course, with Julius Randle and a whole healthy Knicks team. The Knicks are more talented, they're, and they're a, a super dangerous threat, without a doubt. However, without the presence of Julius Randle, they're not more of a talented team, but they play collectively as a team better. And sometimes yeah. that is the better sum than necessarily having the better talent. They play together. <clears throat> it's that, like I keep saying this, and and I, I hope. The other day, I just didn't get misconstrued. I'm telling you, this is one of the most finest Knicks teams that we've watched in like 50 something years. Like, I think it's the best. E- 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 right. Even yeah. the, the, excluding championship years, 69, yeah, right. 73, we know. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the 90s Knicks were really good as well, too. But Not like this, this core, team. yeah, the, the way they're playing together and the chemistry and the camaraderie. And the next man up mentality is great. Bogdan had struggles in the regular season with certain things, but showed flashes. He comes in the first round of the playoff series. He's absolutely phenomenal. I almost cried when he got hurt on the play because I know he was getting into his rhythm, right? Yeah. You, 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 um, you, Bogdan sits, you implement Deuce. Deuce shows his time on why you give him the $13 million on why and Deuce did last night as two nights ago as well too on showed you on why this guy is important to play. Alex um Burks fell out the rotation, shoulder so called thing going on. Let me tell you something. If the shoulders hurt, I want it to continue to be hurt because it didn't look <laughs> too hurt in the last damn two games when he's shooting the damn lights out for what we're yep. doing. We've never had anything like this. We've no. never had anything like this where the, the guys are just going to all fight all together and they're just going to just figure out and go from there. So, you know, people could say easy matchup, whatever matchup. We played the Sixers in the first round. The Sixers are not a seven seed. 
The Sixers no. were a seven seed because of health. Of injury. The Sixers are really good. Okay. Yeah. And the, the, besides the fact that the Indiana Pacers are not concerned about anything on the defensive end, they're actually a really good young and upcoming team with a lot of good talent on that team. Okay. And they're playing and they're competing. But just, he goes, and you know, my question to Knox and both of the Knox, I agree with you. What do the Celtics do then? Do you deal Brown? Those both guys are both under contract. Who do you part with? That's going to be a hell of a conference meeting. It it's it's a a scenario that I think they've been flirting with and avoiding for the past four or five True. years. Mm-hmm. And at some point in time, they, they have to sit at the table and they have to make the decision. And again, we're, we're seeing this under the pretend under the, the the circumstance that they don't win and they don't make it. They um, don't win at that. At that point in time, Brown, unfortunately, you have to work out a trade for him. Jason Tatum, and I know he's been on the cusp of being the face of the league for so long and yet hasn't taken over that reign and unfortunately has let people surpass him. He has a star quality that I don't think you you pass up on. And I'm not saying um, Jalen Brown's not a good player. I think he's a great player. I think in many ways he's underrated and sometimes he's he's given a scapegoat as, as the reason they lose games. No, like a couple of years ago when they lost to the, the Warriors in the finals, everyone was like, well, Jalen Brown can't go left and he makes bad passes. And like, right. at this point in time, Jalen Brown is who he is. He's a two-way player. He's not a great defender, but he's a capable defender. He's capable of getting 20 points anytime he wants. Yes, he has some deficiencies in his game, but one thing you never question is where is he on the court when the game is on the line? He always shows up. Unfortunately for Jason Tatum, there's been times where he, he had, we wanted him to do more and we wanted right. him to look a certain way and he's not presented himself as that. With all that being said, it'd be hard pressed for the Celtics to move off of him. So they potentially have to look at a trade for, uh, for Jalen Brown. God bless. Yeah, that's a very interesting point right there. And well, and again, it, we obviously at least we don't have to worry about that since the Celtics are playing the college finals. But if they were to lose to the New York Knicks or, or the Indiana Pacers in the conference finals, all they they might do a little bit of fire still, not too much fire still, because obviously you want to keep at least one or two guys going to next season. And it's also a testament to the fact that they've been without Chris Aspozegas. Chris Aspozegas is part of the reason Boston had that number one seed from since had the number one seed since like way back in December. Yeah, that's true. Right. Even though Boston couldn't win the in-season tournament, they've had a number one seed locked and loaded. And then you and then you get to the old Knicks now. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to continue repeating what I said about Baltimore over and over. But this New York Knicks team is just so different. The fans are getting into it. it, it the media's getting into it. Even people that are not even Nick fans are being Nick fans. You see Kendrick Perkins courtside, a forward Boston Celtic, OKC Thunder, Cleveland Cavalier, co- be, co- turn himself into a New York Knicks fan. You see Stephon Marbury coming all the way from China to come to watch the New York Knicks play. The most loyal New York Knicks fan ever. And... um. Yeah. yeah, Victor Cruz in the crowd two nights ago too. Victor Cruz is out mm-hmm. there in that picture. We got Buster, a lot of guys. Yeah, a lot, there are a lot of people out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Buster Rhymes, Fat mm-hmm. Joe, Normal, Tracy Noriega, Normal, Casey Nasty. Yeah, there's a lot of normal, people out there. Yeah, Normal, Normal, and to get normal, to the normal. Win sports mm-hmm. and to get to the win sports, we entertainment elements. When you see all these hip hop artists, and artists, and influencers attending New York Knicks games, like what does that say about the type of growth of, of the engagement of the New York Knicks? Or sustainability of the of the fan engagement towards the New York Knicks. When you so have hip hop and R&B people, when you have people in the hip hop industry not only coming to games but doing New York rap songs like New York, New York, or Uptown so, by Guns. So the thing is, um, New York has been the Knicks specifically. I mean, New York as a whole, because the Nets haven't won anything either. But um, the Knicks fan base is a loyal fan base that was treated to um, really loyal, passionate basketball throughout the 1990s. And I mean, I'll be honest, I, I clowned the 90s Knicks as an adult because I realized how bad they truly were and how great Patrick Ewing truly was. Um, but that 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 aura that he carried as, as the King of New York on crown, right? Brought fans in and, and had fans believing that they can win all the time. And, and it was worth watching all the time. And then the, the Knicks fan base and the New York sports media of basketball went through a really ugly time from about 2000 all the way for being realistically until maybe about last year. And it was a difficult product to watch. It was a difficult product to follow because there was no there was no continuity. Guys were being traded every day, every year. You liked the player. And, and before you knew it, he wasn't given a proper chance. 
they, they botched so many situations time and time again. They botched the Marbury situation. They botched the, the Amari Stoudemire situation. They botched terribly the Carmelo Anthony situation, which then le led into the botch of the Chris Tapps for Zinga situation. But at some point in time, um, the Knicks as an organization said, you know, let's forget about the pipe dream of, of just bringing in the best player in the sport who just wants to magically play here because we're, we're here, which isn't realistic. And let's actually start building a team and let's, Let's get draft picks and let's stash these draft picks and let's use the draft picks and trades to bring in better players. Let's draft players and, and assess them and then move them when we realize they we realize their potential and let's build a proper roster. And the Knicks organization have built a proper roster. They have a guy who is a superstar. They have a guy who's a second option. They have complementary players who do specific things well, but are all at least three-dimensional. Because what was happening with the 90s Knicks is they had guys who just did one thing well. That guy was tough. Mm -hmm. That guy rebound. That guy shot threes. Not on this roster. All the guys on the Knicks heavy rotation can at least do two or three things well at the same time. And that's what keeps them in rotation. Having three guys who play college basketball together and know each other that well goes a great way in building team chemistry. Because if I see these three guys are locked in and committed to each other, I want to be locked in and committed to them too. So this, it's not hard to get an Isaiah Hartenstein to join in on that. It's not hard to get an Alec Burke to join in on that when he's coming back to the team. And I know I myself have clowned Tom Thibodeau over the years for him uh, sometimes playing players a lot and excessively. And sometimes it's running not just a number. The, or as everybody keeps saying, running them into the ground. Right. And Stan Van, Stan Van Gundy had said that there are other players who play a lot of minutes too, and, and Tibbs gets a bad, a bad rap. But that's I'm going to push back. That's a coach sticking up for another coach. What Tibbs has done is, put guys in too many minutes when they didn't need the minutes specifically at that time. Like there are times where you can reduce a guy's minute to make it front heavy or back heavy based on an injury and based on their, their, their rhythm and their play. And he just kind of always took to the, now you're playing 44 minutes. That being said, I'm not going to knock him because right now they're on the cusp of the conference finals. So picking at his, his coaching style is a moot point, but to answer your, your question, to speak to the point you were making this Knicks organization and this Knicks team is worth watching, it's worth following, it's worth believing in because they believe in each other. And the NBA and basketball in itself is better when the Knicks are better. Exactly. And when the Knicks are better, that leads to a lot of people doing hip hop, hip hop songs in their own version of Go New York Go. That's what we talked about with Kenny on the show last week. We like that Go New York Go anthem just brings a whole different element to people that want to watch New York Knicks basketball a lot more. Even when it's they're fun. Not, even when they're not always winning. Like, let, 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 let me uh, I, I draw a quick point for, for, for my Knox connection right quick, too, which is so interesting. I tell you, one day I'm going to write a novel about the New York Knicks, <laughs> about the psychology and um, on how people do things. Knox, you, 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 you make a good point. I tell a lot of people, first of all, the Knicks in the 90s had Patrick Ewing and 11 thugs. That's yep. what the Knicks was, okay? Mm -hmm. we, they also we, had John Starks, uh, Charles Oakley. No, 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 no. They, they no, Rafi, throw down. Rafi, let me, let, let, let me, let, let, let the, let the 41 year old <laughs> explain this one to you right here. The team was good, but they weren't super talented. They had Patrick Ewing, who was a sports phenom. He came yeah. from Jamaica when he was 15 years old. He went to Washington, D.C. area. He was a state player. He was the number one player. He was absolutely phenomenal. He yep. went to college at Georgetown. He won a national championship. He probably would have won a little bit more if it wasn't for North Carolina. And for one year, I believe, with, with, with Villanova, with, with, with one thing going on there. And that's neither here nor there. He won a national championship. He's been great from his life existence. He went to the Knicks. He resurrected the Knicks. We haven't had a number one pick. Since then, whether by hook or crook, I, I've seen the lot. I don't know. They can put 92 Knicks lottery balls in there and one other team, and the Knicks will not get the number one pick. But that's neither here nor there. So he came, resurrected the franchise. They got good at one point. But even the guys that are there, Oakley is a bruiser. He is a brawler. Xavier McDaniel, yeah, he can do a little offenses here. That's a rough rider. John Starks, go do the research really about how John Starks got there. John Starks is a rough rider too. Go do your homework. We had guys that was, if we were down five points in the fourth quarter, you heard the defense chant with the loud organ. We were going to beat you up for the whole entire fourth quarter. We was going to use all our fouls, block our shots, and that's how we won the game. 
And Ewing was our offensive talent. And when he didn't do well offensively, well, that lets you know what happened with the Knicks. So yep. when people – I had an argument with these three guys in here that think they're geniuses with basketball, and they were trying to explain to me one time that, oh, the Knicks in 94 were better than the Rockets. I said, no, they were not. No, 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 no. No, hey. no, they were not. Even, <laughs> even, even not. <laughs> And when I'm not just doing that because they won the finals. I'm just telling no. you that the roster on paper, the Knicks were good. But that roster that the Rockets had was a little bit better. Ra- yeah. um, Hakeem Olajuwon, Kenny Smith. pretty good. You know, pre- yeah. Kenny Smith was pretty good. Um, Robert Ory, we know Robert Ory didn't, uh, he, he wasn't Michael Jordan or LeBron, but he was pretty influential towards NBA history, right, Robert Ory? Yeah, right? yeah Robert Ory had like pretty, two or eight times. Pretty- and you know yeah, what? Yeah. You always talk about Vernon LeBron. Maxwell. We never talk. We never talk about the amount of titles Robert Ory has. He has you kidding me? Yeah, with seven. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! He's partying with Tom Brady. Are you kidding me? This guy. So I had to explain that to them. But the Knicks were just tough, really good teams. Yes, you you do not get in the NBA without being talented. You have to have a skill at something. But at something. in regards to, uh, of, of course, and, and the later Knicks 90s teams is different. Those teams had talent. LJ, yeah. Marcus Camby, with Pat, with Spree, with Houston. Houston. You also have yeah. to remember, Spree just came from, but still did great things. Spree just had to get the cloud over him with choking P.J. Carlissimo. LJ right. was a good player, but we also got LJ at the end part of his career with the back in certain situations. Back God, bless him. God, God bless him with the four-point play. Um, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They gave away starts. They went different with the point guards. It wasn't Chris Charles and Charlie Ward. They, they went in, I'm saying they went in other ways eventually to change up certain things with the team to make those 99 runs help stopped a lot of those trips. But with that being said, it, it's just so funny. Another thing that I was going to add to is Brooklynites. A lot of West Indian and Caribbean people were Knicks fans because Patrick Ewing was from Jamaica, right? 100%. So, so, so a lot of Brooklyn and a lot of that, everybody in those 90s times stuck with, with, with Patrick Ewing. If you, were, if you were in New York then and you were Caribbean and you weren't a Knicks fan because of Patrick, your first direct one was the Bulls with Michael Jordan because that was the direct counterpart on the team that was beating them, right? Yep. So, so now yep. I'm going to tell you the big – and this is the conglomerate of where I'm going with this whole story. A lot of these guys in New York, and I said it to Rafi, God bless the Giants, God bless the Yankees, Mets. I'm not a Mets fan, but, you know, all the other New York teams. There's nothing like New York when the Knicks are winning. Nothing. Yep. The Yankees nothing. have 27 titles, and it cannot account for when the look, – look at this run right here. The, the Knicks might not win, but this run feels more special than anything because it's something about the Knicks and New York and how you yeah. feel when they're doing so well. It is the talk of town for everybody, for people that don't even know about basketball, from the yep. lovers to the haters. And, and, and here goes the biggest thing what I said with the story, Knox. A lot of those people that hate the Knicks so bad that live in New York are people that have been hurt from the 90s and they can't come (laughs) back. And they refuse to, I said it, they they refuse, they hurt. (laughs) So now they're Lakers fans. They have, my father was a Lakers fan. So they're Lakers (laughs) fans. They're they're Spurs fans. There's no Spurs fans no more. Remember them? Remember remember Mm. there was a lot of those guys. For for a hot second, yeah. Right. They're, They're Orlando fans. They've never been to Disney World. Their mother never took them there. They never seen Mickey Mouse unless it was in their apartment. <laughs> all of these people, I, I like the I, all these opinions about yeah. New York, and that's what happened with a lot of them. And they and they and trust me, I see it in them. And I'm like, yeah, I know you was you lost your mortgage. I get it. Listen, I cried a lot of tears on pillow. You lost your house in '98. I, that's what happened, and I get it. You're not coming back. That's fine. There's some of us that didn't go anywhere, and right. guess what? For 40 something years in Golden State, they didn't win a title. When they finally started winning, look how that fan base was loyal. The Kansas yeah. City Royals didn't win a World Series for 40, 50 something years. Um, yeah. Butler and all those guys, when they won, they tore that city apart. The Eagles might not, I'm not, the Eagles ain't win no titles. No. When Philadelphia finally got that ball, by golly. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's all right. right. Sometimes you wait and it comes in increments. But that's the biggest thing. But the, a lot of the haters from New York, 
Those, I'm telling you, those are closet Knicks fans, and they won't tell you. At, at some point, they was they, they they friend from 23 years ago could tell you. I told you to have that Knicks hoodie and thing, but this happened, so we don't <laughs> like them no more. And that's all it is. So that's this is why we that's get this nostalgia. Is. You go to Philadelphia. I keep telling them Sixers, Flyers, Phillies. You go to DC. The Wizards could be a Greek. That's who they like, and they stick yeah. in loyal. You come here, you're going to find the 35-year-old dude that he's a Minnesota Timberwolf fan. Really? Yeah. You was a Timberwolf fan? Really? Yeah. Was you a all of a sudden, he's a, he's, he's a Nuggets fan. It's like, you're a Nuggets fan? Yeah. You, you, were you happen? a Timberwolf fan? Or were you a Nuggets fan when, when, when um, Lafonso <laughs> Ellis was there? Do you know and, and Nick Van do, do you know Chris <laughs> Jackson? Do you know Brian Stiff? No, you don't. Right. But you're a Nuggets fan. And you, yeah. So that that's really it. That's all. And it's fine, guys. We we just gonna take the ride for what it is. And it's scary how we've been this good one time in the seven hundred years and we still can't even get that. We still can't even get that without <laughs> I got people say, yo, y'all gotta be yo, y'all here's now the conceding. Yo, but when y'all get past this round, you gotta worry about Boston. Dad, thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Thank thank you for, for being proud of the place that's you're overpaying in taxes. And, yeah. and, and and you go to work every day. Thank thank you for the vote of confidence that you have already prejudged our destiny instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to ride the wave. Which, you know, which is, that, mm-hmm. just real quick, I was going to piggyback off of that. I'm going to ride the wave is, is what a true fan says, right? I'm, I'm going to ride the wave. I'm, I'm, I'm here to see where this goes. I'm, I'm with it. I'm going with it. And I hope that regardless of how the Knicks outcome the season turns out, some of those fans do come back and they stay because they stay. It, it, it is just better when the Knicks are good and when Knicks fans are cheering and New York is cheering. Like you said, the Yankees' last World Series cannot compare to the Knicks' run right now. No, That's how much New York basketball affects the city. City, uh, correct. How much of it's, it's a pulse. Yeah. Saying, yeah. We, and, we love basketball here. And yeah. you know what? You know how many Knicks fans managed to walk back? You know how many Knicks fans, you know how many fans the Knicks have lost when, when, they, were having the, when they were having the type of Decades that they were happy. In the oh my goodness! But but they were trying their best to lose fans, Rob. They the, the Knicks have Let's put you that. through some things, Earthful man. Times. Tough times. I, Tough times. I, I, I'm not Rafi. I understand why they left, but I just yeah. couldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't, I, yeah, this, they left. Yeah, is, fans is, left after the Kobe Anthony trade. Fans left. The, for, uh, for the next oh, oh, I'm oh, not mentioning nobody's name. I'm just talking to people about no, the the Carmelo <laughs> Anthony trade is is a true turning point, not turning point, but it's a true moment in Nick history where I think everyone collectively was like they really don't know what they're doing. Yeah, you had a player who was a superstar player, all time great player, all time great scorer, set to be a free agent. And you decided to trade for him mid-season and gut your entire six-man roster. Oh, no, it's a draft pick. Say no more. Say no more. And then that's that's it. Brooklyn. That's when the loss of fans was, became more real. <laughs> the, the moment the Knicks were finally doing well and they're like, you know what? We're not going to wait for June for Carmelo Anthony. Let's just give up our, our five rotation players plus a six rotation player plus a, plus a bunch of draft picks. I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. They, they really don't know what they're doing. But that's the pass. And they're doing good now, going to yeah. York. Exactly. How about a uh, how about a great mistake by accident? We um we don't decide to give Pat Riley higher upper management position on yep. top of his coaching position in 1994. He emails us and says he's no longer taking the job. He's not taking the job. And then he job. goes to Miami where he is the coach, and then of course they give him upper management status. And the rest is history because during that time, I believe the Miami Heat have won one, two, three. Four NBA titles. No, actually, no, no, no. Three, three, right? three. It's only three. Three, three finals. So they, they, they won six three, finals appearances. Six final appearances. And the things that they do for their organization, which is build, grit, defense, tough, and stuff, is things that we live our ideology on. So, in actuality, yeah. what he did there would have been here, but we didn't think yeah. that he could be a vice president and a basketball operations and a general oh, yeah. damn manager because it was <laughs> unprecedented in 19... 19- Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing it. So we're not going to do it either. So yeah, he's going to go to South Beach and he's going to do it over there. And then we wonder why we mad. We mad though. Thanks a lot, James Dolan Sr. <laughs> Peace.
Lord. All right. Now on to on, now on to next topic. Well, um, yeah. Now that the, now that the Cavaliers are out, what do you think Donovan Mitchell's future is going to look like? Starting with you, Ooh, Spider. Ryan, you say starting me? Yeah, starting with you, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, Ryan, go ahead. I don't know what the, I don't I don't I'm seriously I don't even know what they're gonna do. I don't even know what he wants to do. I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we all drawing it wrong. Does it seem like he wants to be there, guys? Uh, am, am I getting that feeling that he don't? You know, Garland didn't play too well this series. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You keep hearing Lakers. You. You know, I, so I, I, we've been rumored. I don't know if that's a good choice for us now. I love Donovan Mitchell. God bless him. He is super talented. He can score the ball. Um, New York, Westchester County guy. You know, we, we'd be really undersized in the backcourt. We'd be offensively gifted. Um, I don't know how many basketballs we would be able to circulate amongst the Finn, Brunson, and Randall if they were all there. They'd probably have to figure it out. You know, many guys do. But man, Feek and Knox, I, I don't, I don't know. I just know that it doesn't seem like he's happy in Cleveland. Yeah, um, I'm with you in in terms of not being sure what happens with Donovan Mitchell. Uh, this is his second small market team that he has essentially carried um, into yeah. the, into the playoffs, and he is a guy who, I mean, statistically, he, he has some records, right? He's what. I think third all time in most fifty point playoff games. He, he's had some huge moments. He's a he's a bucket, a walking bucket, as, as they say. Um, One score seven like you mentioned, points. right? But like you said, yeah. his his co star Darius Garland looks like he's regressed a bit since he's gotten there. Um, wow. It's not really practical to win a championship or to be a true contender with a backcourt that's that small and defensively inept. Neither one of them oh. are particularly good defenders. Um, I think Cleveland's going to have to decide between Mobley, um, Mitchell, Garland, and Allen. I think two stay, two go, and you use the two that go as assets to truly build a team because the team has some holes, but they do have some good structure in place already. But it just seems like Mitchell's a guy who probably needs to be on a team truly contending for a championship right now. The New York fit was good before they got Brunson. It's a bad fit now. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Lakers, I I think everyone always predicts someone's going to the Lakers. I don't see him going to the Lakers. I don't, I don't think that makes much sense, especially because you don't know who the Lakers coach is going to be. You don't know if LeBron's going to be there. A trade there doesn't make any sense if, if you're Mitchell. Um, honestly, I, I can say this in, in full truth. I don't know what happens with Donovan Mitchell. We're real talk. He, he, his, yeah, it's, we it's know. I mean, you heard that Brooklyn's going to have a package to pay for it. Ooh, that'd be good. <laughs> I mean, that'd be good. But if, if, you're, if you're Donovan Mitchell, do you say – I want to go from teams that were constant playoff, um, constantly going to the playoffs. The team that didn't make the playoffs the last two years. Well, the last year. Brooklyn, Brooklyn was good this year. They won. They won fifth. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> Brooklyn was not good this year. No, Brooklyn, that was Brooklyn liberty. is. I'm sorry. That was a liberty. The Nets are, are not in a good place for. Well, let me say this: the Nets are not in a good place for a player like him. The Nets are a good place for a young player who. The Nets are in the same situation they were. Four years ago when they had uh, Russell and, and Lavert and Allen, where it's like, we can bring in young players and build a young team. But for a guy who's a top 15 player in the NBA, absolutely not. That makes no sense to go. I don't think he'd want to, to go there. Nets. Like you said, no. I don't even know if he'd want to go from mid-market to no, – I mean, listen, Brooklyn Brooklyn is not really good right now. So I don't know if no. that's what he would, would sign off for. But, you know, you know, Rafik, you know, it probably makes sense and what not to lean to. It's probably best that you probably keep Mitchell to the best of your ability, Cleveland, and keep on um, the young kid and deal the other guys. Oh, man, I, I, I like Garland so much. What has happened to him? I like Garland, to too. But, but what I, but has I, happened I, to him? I, I, think, I think the two of them just don't mesh together. Right, right like, that might be it. That might be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the two of them just don't mesh. Like you said before, there's only one basketball. I think the two right. of them don't mesh together. And Mitchell can play off ball a bit because he, he can spot shoot sometimes, but his mm -hmm. dominance and his best his best game is when he's being ball dominant and, and attacking. Yeah. Garland needs the ball in his hands. He, he's a bit of more of a true point guard than I think people give him credit for, but he can't really be a true point guard if his secondary player is an off the ball scorer. So they, right. they're just not a natural fit together. I think the, the Cavs 
had envisioned a Lillard McCollum situation, but they're just not that they're, they're not that combination. Yeah. Yeah, I also they thought they were going to envision Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, but we all know that's not going to work. No, I, I I will say that, and I'm gonna throw this out there because you, you know I, I am a Heat fan, and don't be surprised if the Jimmy Butler situation in Miami does not truly get reside um, resolved, and I can see a Jimmy Butler for Donovan Mitchell trade Ooh. being beneficial wow. for both sides. Yeah, that'd be good, big, and and um. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, Jimmy Butler. Jesus, I, if that Tyler Hero situation has any kind of truth to it, I heard they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna explore things on, yeah. on in the off season for both sides. But I'm yeah. hearing that it, they um, as much as a, Jimmy's a rough rider and they love him and he's done good things there, I hear there are some people who are getting tired of those shenanigans. And and also he's thirty four, thirty five, and he's yes, and you make a lot contract. of money, right, right. And you, you, you make a, you go make forty four million dollars next, <laughs> right, right, right. Got, yeah, I look at the contract, you know Pat Riley you does not play. That. Pat, Pat Riley does out. not pay you. No, Pat Riley didn't play Dwayne Wade. He's not going to pay Jimmy Butler. <laughs> he got one year where it's the player option of fifty mil. I don't care how good he is. I'm opting in. Here we go, here you go, sir. I'm coming to work. <laughs> you figure it out. You figure it out, but make sure that all fifty million is all there. Can't cheat me anyway. This ain't the NFL. I, I'm opting right. in. Whatever you do after that is fine. Just make sure every two weeks the check coming in the account. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, sometimes they talk about this stuff with athletes in sports, and they'd be like, like they talk about the, the, the Giants with Dan, and this is what's going off topic. We're gonna get back to it. Oh, trade yeah. Daniel Jones. I said, do you know that the Giants will have to pay him twenty five to thirty for the thirty five yeah. million dollars if they cut him? Yeah. They, 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 you, 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 you just can't do stuff like that in sports. No. Yo, Russell Westbrook is playing bad. Cut him. Somebody got to pay him forty four million dollars. You, you know the the only team that I can ever remember just outright cutting a guy and eating his contract was the Detroit Pistons with Josh Smith. They were so fed up with him that they said, we're just going to cut you and pay you the yeah, last yeah. three years yeah. on your contract. That's a rare occurrence in basketball. That's, that and never that had to be fed up. He, yeah. Smart, yeah. He, he had to be smoking a lot of pot in the, in, in the parking yeah. lot. And he had, his whole, he had his whole team, his whole friend. You know Josh Smith already. <laughs> he had the whole neighborhood yeah. there. Because yeah. three years to chalk up the money. Now you got to sell popcorn. You got to sell hot dogs. You got to sell shirts. You, you got to be a trainer. You, you, you got to come to my house and do my lawn, something. You got to work something. somehow for the organization. No, they, they, they paid him to do. stay home. They paid him to stay home. Yeah. That, his agent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot to take in. All right, let's transition to the next topic. Um, Obviously, the Dallas Mavericks managed to pull off a victory against the Oklahoma City Thunder in game five. They've, they currently lead three games to two when are literally one game away from uh, from another Upset where a Luka Dantas led Dallas Mavericks defeats a one seed because let's not forget two years ago they upset the Phoenix Suns when nobody yeah. had the Mavericks get to the conference finals that year. And well, but there's a difference between face to face the Phoenix Suns with the roster they've had back in 2022 to face a young up and coming OKC Thunder who, who got the number one seed after going all, all out with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. So yeah, what are your thoughts about the Mavericks upsetting the Oklahoma City Thunder? And do you think they're going to pull it off this time, Knox? Uh, um, I will say I have some bias. I, I love what the Thunder have done as an organization, and I, I, I wish them much success, success whether it's this season or next. That being said, the Dallas Mavericks are playing a style of basketball that I think Every kid who played street ball or who played like 2K <laughs> envisions. At the end of the day, I got two guys who can just go out there and get a bucket. Yeah. And through that ability to have two guys who can just do that simple thing, everyone else can find something to do and stick to it. So PJ Washington can now be a better version of PJ Tucker because there's two guys on the team who can just get a bucket when we need a bucket. Derek Jones Jr. can be a true 3 and D uh, perimeter defender because at the end of the day, I got two guys who can just get a bucket when I need to get a bucket. And on top of their ability to score is they both can pass. 
right at two different levels i have a, a traditional smaller guard who can score pass shoot finish at the basket i got a larger guard who can score pass shoot and finish at the basket and make those tough shots and an unspoken ability that maybe these two guys do better than anyone um other than maybe kobe is and, and bear with me this with this, with this analogy so in, in football you know a lot of plays can be demoralizing but there's nothing more demoralizing than the pick six right not only mm. did i turn the ball yes. over but i end up having the team score the same exact time right in basketball a sim right in basketball a similar equivalent to that is and Stephen curry I'll, I'll i'll include in here too it's like i defended that guy with sometimes one or two of my best defenders i stayed hard on him the entire duration of the shot clock i forced him into a tough shot and he still scored there are few players who can do that better than Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. And the only person is probably Steph Curry. Those type of baskets are demoralizing to a defense because it's not a guy miss coverage. It's not a backdoor pass. It's no, we, we put our two best defenders on him and he still scored. That might not rattle a veteran tough playoff team, but for a young team going against the Mavericks, that's a hard pill to swallow. So when I throw Lou Dort, and I throw Jalen Williams, or I throw Lou Dort, and I throw Chet, uh, Chet Holmgren, and somehow Kyrie still splits a double and scores on two defenders with a layup, or I push Luka into a tough step back with two seconds left on the shot clock, and he still hits that step back three, those plays are demoralizing. I think the Thunder still stand a chance of pulling out the series. Um, I will say this has been an extremely fun series to watch. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been tough it defense. Did, it's been great yeah, offense. It did, it it's did, been it incredible to watch, different. and I hope it goes seven. Yeah, I mean, part of me wants the Dallas Mavericks to finish off the Oklahoma City Thunder. Thunder, I believe. Let's see, when's game? When is game six? This Saturday. But then, part of me is like, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. It's 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 literally it's a more unpredictable than you think. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Ryan? It, it it's so tough, Vic, um, because there's there's been times in the in the in the last few years where Dallas have had certain games where you think they're gonna close out or clinch or do certain things, and they absolutely, when you think it's guaranteed, just absolutely frizzle up. So I'm 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 nervous to say Saturday they're gonna close it out. I want to say I want to say right right now they're on the cusp because the Oklahoma City are a very good young upcoming team, and their future is so bright with those kids that they have there and Shays. Special, God bless them. They, they have a lot of really good kids there, down there. The Williams kids, the Chet, Dort can defend. I mean, they have a really a, a good a giddy. They have a good core of kids. Yeah. But for the first time, the, um, remember they're playing with house money. They have nothing to lose, and sometimes those right. young teams like that are the scariest ones to play with. Um, they're not going to give up though. So they're going to give Dallas a fighting punch Saturday. And if Dallas is on their heels and don't close out, Oklahoma will win game six. I, 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 I want Dallas to do it though. Cause I, I like Ka. I, I like Luca. Sometimes Luca can get a little extra flack. Sometimes he deserves it. And Luca, listen, in the off season, you got to stay out the gyro spot. You got to keep that weight down a little bit now, Luca. Now you got to, you got to stay yeah. consistent with that. All right. Yeah. But 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 uh, but um, it, it it's just so tough. I hear the analogy you said with the, with the kids in the street park and how the Dallas would play, which which makes a lot of sense. And um, it, it it's just so hard. The, the Dallas has had games where they have not closed out before, so I'm nervous. And but they have a young team on their heels now. They're starting to they're starting to think about themselves. So this is the best time to go home, use your home crowd, jump on them early. Don't make this a game and try to close it out. Otherwise, you you could give this young team confidence again. And who's to say, even Dallas would be the favorite in a game seven on the road because of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, especially with their playoff accomplishments and feats and Kyrie. But Oklahoma would be home. They are young. They have nothing to lose. They would have been able to get back in the series, and anything can happen. When it's not, when it's a game seven, and it's no sureness about what you're going to do, so we'll see. But hopefully, Kyrie and Luke and them can can wrap it up. It would be nice. It it, it seems like, um, I don't know, maybe Minnesota might have pissed that Denver off because it clearly seems like that's going the other way now, right? That's yeah, probably going to finish four two unless 
Kevin Garnett, yeah. Latrell Sprewell, um, to help <laughs> Wally Anthony Zerbiak. Edwards as well. Wally Zerbiak. Um, <laughs> Andrew Gallant. Where Wally go? Um, um, Cold Spring Harbor? Yeah, Cold Spring, Long Island. Yeah, Wally. They need something. Um, Sam Cassell. Uh, I don't Terrell know. Brandon. because Terrell Brandon. Because... It, it, Man, that was tough. You can't give, you can't let the champs back in like that. You can't play with the champs. Not Nicolo. No. no. <laughs> but you we should expect this because this is the defending champion, Denver Nuggets. Champs? They got back from two games after losing the first two home okay. games to, play, to get to Minnesota. We should we should have expected something like this. I did not one, expect one thing this. I was- I did not well, expect Minnesota to sweep the, sweep, sweep the, um, the Denver Nuggets anyway as we transition to that topic. But yeah, obviously, if you want our thoughts on what happens between the Nuggets and the G-Wolves tonight, you'll do it to the next episode, however I do it. But while we're on the subject, do you think the T-Wolves can still defeat the Denver Nuggets in the series? I, I think they actually could, right? Because in terms of a, a structured roster, they have all the pieces necessary to, to I don't want to say beat because the Nuggets are defending champions and they have the best player in the sport, but they have the roster necessary to make things difficult for, for a team structured like that. The problem I have when I've, I've watched the, the Timberwolves games, Carl Anthony Towns is the most skilled big man that I've seen who lacks simple fundamentals. He can shoot a three. He can put a ball on the, on, on the ground. He, he can do all these things skill-wise. But simple basketball fundamentals, he, he just does not possess. I don't know if you guys remember when the Nuggets had that eight-point swing at the end of the first half of, of, that, of the game before, right? Mm-hmm. simple things as he's chasing the defender and he's going for the block with the wrong hand. The defender is in front of him. He's going for the block on, with his right hand. You're supposed to go around and go for the block with your left hand. There are times I'm watching him defend against a smaller guy and he's reaching. He's the, he's the bigger defender and he's reaching on a smaller player instead of letting the player come to him. And undoubtedly, if he turns, you def- to deflect the pass. Or if he turns to shoot, you block the pass. There are simple fundamentals that he just does not possess, and he makes really poor fouls. That on top of, I, I know there's been this, re- like, a, a resurrection of the sports media trying to defend Rudy Gobert, but we yeah. as people who follow the sport have to stand up for it. Like, he needs to give back his defensive player award, right? I'm not saying he's not a good defender. He is a good defender. But you cannot be the best defender at the weakest position in modern basketball four times in the past 10 years. That being said, you are not providing any resistance in the series. Now, people who I've seen online, I'm, I'm not big on online comments, but occasionally you read a couple of them. I've seen people say, well, Anthony Davis is a great defender and Nikola Jokic also scored on him. Anthony Davis should have never been tasked with having to just defend Nikola Jokic every single possession while having to be the number one or number two option on the other end offensively. You're asking too much of any single player. The the Lakers needed a secondary big to give him some breathers so someone else can defend him. But that being said, he made life difficult for Nikola Jokic. Rudy Gobert is not providing any resistance for Nikola Jokic passing the ball out of the perimeter, passing the ball from the paint, scoring in the paint, passing out of the paint. He is providing zero resistance at a position that he is supposedly be, supposed to be the best at defensively. I'm not going to say that they should trade him and, and he hasn't earned his, his paycheck or anything like that. But organizationally, something has to be done where there needs to be a restructuring of, of what he's allowed to do defensively because what he's been doing has not, has not worked at all. It just hasn't. Yeah, it really has its. Well, Bear, um, I, I like him, but um, he has had times that that's why sometimes when um I bring up my good my crash brother Patrick when we do have our sports debates, just in general, he'll say, um. And don't let me let me make sure I get we get I get back to Gobert. One time he told me that Dante DiVincenzo is not a good defender, and I said, "Okay, explain to me what and and then explain what made you think." And remember, there's there's so many different realms of what a defender is, right? Right. right? Mm-hmm. So so I mean. You can be a great cornerback in football and get smoked four games, but you can finish the season with eight interceptions. 
but right. me, right, but 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 so so um, and trust me, Diggs on the Cowboys did it several times, but and that's another mm-hmm. there. But but so so um, the, the there's there's guys that are great on ball defenders. There's guys that are block that are rim protectors. There are guys that are play great in the passing lane and can get steals. There are guys that are smart that play great in a system. So in the system, they figure out where they can be good at and be good defensively there. So there's many different realms of how to get a stop. There's guy Jalen Brunson might not be the greatest one-on-one uh, on-ball defender, but he's drew one of some of the most charges in the league, right, guys? A right. charge is a defensive right. stop, which gives the right, but ain't three for nothing. He also gets steals too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's not good. So there's different realms of what you can do defensively. So when he brought up Dante DiVincenzo, and I said, well. Well, well, what do you want? He can actually stand in front of somebody and actually make a stop. His hands are very good. He creates steals. He get in the passing lanes. I actually, believe it or not, as a guard, Dante DiVincenzo blocks shots as well, too. Seen him do it several times in the past three, four months. Um, he makes plays. He does things as well. But I said, so I think you're a little, I think you're wrong on that one. But, but, but what I'm trying to say to him, I said, well, now that you say that he's not a good defender and you're comparing him to other realms, and I said, I said, who is a good defender in the NBA? Because I said, if we really be fair, there's probably eight to 15 guys, if that, right. that we can right. if if that, and remember, there's 400 right. and plus something players in the NBA, right? So mm-hmm. if, if eight to 15 or 20 are good defenders, what, is, is the percentage of good defenders in the NBA high? No. No. You, you need a team. You need a system. You need things to work. Is Stephen Curry a great defender? No. No. But the years the Warriors were playing well, the, the scheme that Steve Kerr drew up with Klay Thompson, who was healthy as a perennial great defender, and Draymond, yeah. who's an absolute rough rider, right? Yeah. And Kevin Looney, who you have in your prime, right? And then you bring Durant later, and Durant bought in. Durant's defense in Golden State was immaculate. It was immaculate, and he bought yeah. in. And he bought yeah. in, and it raised his game. They, they, they had, the, before him, they had the Iguodala. Iguodala defends. You had Sean yeah. Livingston. Sean Livingston defends. You got, yeah. so, so you got guys in a system where it works, and then you're going to say, because trust me, ain't nobody ever had no conversation and said, yo, you know, Stephen Curry was really good on defense last night. That's a bunch of crap. A right. bunch of crap. Okay, there's there's eight to fifteen guys that probably really can defend, and that's a higher fetch number. The game of basketball is not orchestrated that way, where you're going to say that this you, you don't have a Kawhi Leonard like eight nine years ago, where you're like, yo, this guy, man, you probably can't even do that no more. Let me tell you something. No. I watched Jalen Brunson make five guys fall in damn near one game. You gotta be careful how you guard these guys. I watched Kyrie right. shoot it, dribble it to the middle of the paint, and shoot a left-handed hook shot to win I the thought- game. <laughs> I guess it was like a... That was insane. How, how, how you, 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 you explain to the Lakers. The Lakers played really good defense on Jamal Murray for those last couple of possessions. Yep. He had a, he had he a series scored. where he had two buzzer beater shots. What are they supposed to do? You tell One of them me, was off the wrong foot. <laughs> off the wrong foot. You, you don't even... Te- Yo, that's the new generation of basketball with these moves. Bro, you don't even take kids to do something like that. You, you got to guard that, and then you're going to say, man, they was bad defensively. You guard them. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? Why what? You know what? Going back to talk about the New York Knicks. I, this one time I got to live out. I mean, I, I mean, well, we, we might have to transition back to it because Draymond Green said something a few weeks ago. <laughs> he had a note to say this Knicks run is a flu. Right, brother. Came uh, on doing that first podcast. Yeah, yeah. He, he, was, he just wants some streams. Yeah, that's what he's doing that for. And I, I love Draymond, but Draymond, mm-hmm. God bless him. But and then you gotta understand too, um, uh, Rafi, TNT going out with a bang because they're not gonna be talking about basketball no more next year. Because it's because the possible NBA return to NBC. Remember those days, guys? That 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 TNT yeah. thing is done. And and that and listen, he's I like Bill Simpson's podcast. Remember the NBA on NBC? It, it's coming back in a few years. Get ready for it. Sha- got- I like Shaq. I like Charles Barkley. And Kenny's not as bad as them with the other stuff. But th- I'm just going to say this for what it is. There are many people that do not like the opinions of Shaq and Charles Barkley. And there are many people that I won't, I, 
There are many people that have other issues with them too, as well, with certain right. things. Man, so there are I mean, people that love them, this but there are, there's, there are people who are not fond of how and some of the things they do and say. And I'll leave that yeah. one there. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, you know. There, there are many people that are not fond of Stephen A and what he says, but that's not, and I don't work for ESPN, and we're going to leave that one there. Yeah. Yeah, we're obviously going to leave that alone. But you know what? Yeah, that pretty much it. Now we get to the next topic. Let's talk a little bit about Bronny James as well. Ooh. There are some questions I need to ask. Like, where do you think where do you think Bronny James will end up? Do you think you think you will play with his dad, LeBron James? Starting with you, Ryan. Honestly, I hope so. I think it'd be a cool story. And he's actually doing very well in the combine. Yeah, I didn't think he would do as well as what he. I mean, he's doing. Beside the only person doing better than him, I'm hearing is Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard is absolutely tearing up the charts, and uh, but um, he's doing well. So I mean, for the fairy tale story, I wish them well, and I wish it would work out. I don't care what team they play for. If it's the Chattanooga um, Fireflies, uh, that, I think that's a great. As a father, yes, I want them to play together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would do anything to play to play to play one season with your son in, in sports oh, that you play. Like, one minute. I'm, I'm I'm with you on that one, Ryan. I I'm as much as I love sports. One of the wow. things I love the most about sports is the narrative and the story. There's no better story than LeBron playing his son. So, wow. however they can make that happen, let that happen. Yeah, even though I'm, you know how I feel about Bronny James coming to the NBA right now. You talked about this in, on the over the phone and in past com- and you heard my, my opinion about it in past conversations. Even though him playing with, even if it means LeBron James being the 12th man coming off the bench, playing with LeBron James would be a miracle for him. Think, you think it's, he it's stayed just, in school? It's a great story. You think he should have stayed in yeah. school? Yeah, yeah, part of me thought that he should have yeah. stayed in like, <laughs> transfer because he said still in the college transfer portal while agreed to so, go to the NBA. Let's keep that in mind, gentlemen. And, did uh, he hire agent? Oh, nah, man. not really. No, he didn't hire agent okay. yet. Okay. Yeah, he would okay. be, but but he would be useful. But coming to the NBA at this state, he would be useful coming off the bench for a guy, for a guy as a deep defensive three point shooting specialist. Wouldn't you guys agree? What you think? I mean, I, I think he, I think he is an NBA ready player in in the mold, right? Like in terms of granted, he, I think he's shorter than originally listed. He's six one. But he can he can hit an open shot. He's very athletic. All those things are the part of the mold that would make an NBA player be useful. Give him more minutes. But he just need reps, right? Because I would say that yes. the guys get better yes. by, by getting reps, and he didn't get those reps in USC. So that's why I think it, it would have made sense for him to come back. But I stand by the original point that Ryan and I made. If he has a chance to play with LeBron, man, play with LeBron. Bro. Oh my goodness, that's, that's a story. And, and you know what, freak, speaking of you know what you just said, two knots was good reps. Rafi, look, 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 we just brought up Deuce McBride. You, you mm-hmm. need opportunities to show you need opportunity. that you can do things. And he, he, you're right. He probably just needs more of that wherever it comes. If it doesn't come in the Nuba, I don't know if he'll, if they'll, if coming from where he's coming from, if he'll be able to have the pride to go back to college, they'll probably still probably challenge it in that way. G League, I guess, to get it, I'm going to presume. But, um, man. It, it, it's it's um it's not going to be easy. I, I hear your point. I thought he was going to go back to school, guaranteed. I thought he was going to, you know. Um, but God bless him. If it works out, it's out. It'd be a it'd be a great story and a great narrative. And um, I, I think he's definitely in preparation. And I, I mean, you know, what I was going to tell you too, Rafi, and tell him. I, I knew that boy wasn't no six three six four. I seen the boy in New York last year at the little AAU thing when it was at Christ the King. That was listen. <laughs> I seen basketball, but I know what six five, six seven, six eight looks like. You're talking about Bronny like, James, yeah, right? He, yeah, I was like, yeah, he's six one. I was born at six five. Yeah, those 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 six heights five. are crazy. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't yeah, see it. Where'd you start? He could jump, or he could he could jump. He's a grasshopper for crying out loud. But boy, yeah. Carmelo six eight, six seven. Boy. That's six seven. He said that 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 not to. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, this is a lot. Well, they're up this episode. Nothing but the sports talk. Thank you guys for stopping by. Appreciate appreciate the time to 
commit to nothing but that sports talk. Hey, Fee, can you pray for my Rangers tonight, please? If he was up three nothing. Then. Yeah, don't worry. Prayers out to the Rangers. I don't see the Rangers blowing this series. Jesus Christ. It, it, I, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. We lost the games had to beat up three nothing, but historically, Rangers is, is the series is still on the Rangers side. From your God to the hockey viewers. Please. <laughs> please. Come on. I didn't get a Nintendo when I was five. Can you just make this work, please? <laughs> For Ryan Walker, Knox Lewis on, Rafika Lewis on. We'll see you next time and enjoy the NBA playoffs. All right.